Good morning. We are going live on Facebook and LinkedIn this morning. Looking forward to chatting with everyone today. And so as we get started, I would like to welcome everyone. I'm going to drop a few links into the chat here. Let's see if I can do that. Good morning. Hi, how are you all doing? So good to see you all this morning. Drop a note in the chat if you are here with me and want to say hi. Looking forward to talking to you all this morning. I thought, you know, I saw a really interesting article and and I feel really bad because I forgot to pull up the name of the person that wrote it. Um, but I'm going to drop a link here so you can see uh, you'll actually be able to take a look at the link itself and read the wonderful comments that this person wrote. But I thought it was interesting because her article was about labeling. And as we are just continuing to go through uh, just current craziness right now, but also I think what is, is good, right, is it's kind of cathartic. Um, the, the United States is going through a reckoning, I think, of, of sorts. And um, I really thought that this article, as short as it was, was really to the point because it talks about, it, the title of it is, Are You Labeling Your Way to Ignorance? And I gotta say, a lot of us are labeling uh, our way to a lot of really not nice things, right? Like that's a politically correct way of saying that. Um, and the, so the article says, you know, that it talks about how jumping to conclusions, uh, especially about people that you disagree with, is keeping you from learning and growing. And I have had some, you know, internal and some external conversations. I love to have internal dialogue, talk to myself, do that a lot, and have these conversations about, you know, how deep do you have to go? You know, do I have to call people out? Do I have to get in their face? Like, what do I have to do to get people to hear what I'm saying? And I've realized that I don't have to be that person um, that gets in your face. Like, that's just not my style. That's not who I am. And so I think that it's really interesting to look at how we address people. Um, you know, the, just this week, right, I've been called racist. I've been called sexist. Um, I've been told that I'm starting a war a war on, on white people um, and that I disparage white people based upon their skin color and that I practice hate speech. And I'm like, wow, really? Um, but when I look at the other DEI professionals or just people in general who are basically just trying to speak up, um, they're really getting the raw end of the stick, right? Like you're getting insults hurled and... I really believe that if you don't listen to others um, and if you don't stop trying to categorize people and put them in a box, that we're never going to get anywhere. We're just not. Um, and I think that the, most of us in the country, in the world, right, like we've got people on here from all around the world. Um, I think that most of us want to get along. We like each other. 
and we really want to work this out you know we want to figure out like what is going on i'm i'm so sorry that you were feeling this way didn't realize not sure why i didn't realize but now that i know we want to fix it right we want to do better and i think that's the general consensus so those people who are outliers um you know i'm going to have to continue to ignore them and i you know i, I think that as I'm seeing just the way that people are being labeled and being jumped on. I have a friend who, um, you know, on the opposite side, you know, she's a white woman and she really wanted to help. And so she said, well, I'm going to post um, that I'm going to give away some of my services for free to black women. So great intent. Um, but the way that it came across wasn't necessarily the best. And I think that we're at a place where we really have to start looking at people's intent. Um, and I, I know that that's not, in order for us to look at intent, it means we have to pause, we have to actually stop, we have to actually get to know the person, and we have to dig a little deeper. And we are so ready to just jump on people immediately, and we're not doing the work. Like, how do you, people are reaching out to me and saying, what can I do? How can we change? I, how can you do that when you can't even have a civil conversation with with somebody, right? Like we really have got to take it back to basics. And um, so I, I wanted to just kind of address that because I, I really, I think one of the things, if we say, what can we do? I think the first thing we have to say is, uh, hi, Jaton, how you doing? Mark, thank you for the message today. I'm actually going to mention this. Um, and so I think that it's really important that we think about how we communicate with others, how we're labeling others, and that we we take the time, right? So that's that's number one. That's gonna be my my um, tip number one. Let's start with just looking at how do we react to people that we may not disagree with, that we really don't know, and let's also start taking conversations offline. Um, I know that's ironic. I'm on a live saying take conversations offline, but this isn't a conversation, right? I'm kind of preaching at you. And so uh, I'll just, I'll ask, you know, practice what I preach. And what I'm gonna preach is let's pause. Let's pause, let's have some conversations. Let's really try to figure out people's motives before we start jumping on them. Um, I think that's important. And I think that for those of you who've watched um, the Unconscious Bias course, a lot of you um, know me through that. Um, if you have not watched it as yet, um, I'm going to drop a link for that as well. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, there we go. And so the Unconscious Bias course, you know, as I mentioned last week when I did this live, Microsoft and LinkedIn have been doing these huge pushes, which I really appreciate because I think it is it's really great that um, this is being offered for free. So it's very rare that you get things for free in life. And this is one of those, one of those times where you're gonna be able to watch this for free. And I've been getting so many messages from people who have been watching um, and they have been um, really sort of paying attention to what's going on. And then they're sending me messages. So if you have sent me a message and I have not responded as yet, um, I apologize, we're trying, <laughs> but we're getting a lot of messages um, every day. I'm probably, I don't even know the number at this point, but it's usually, you know, about a couple hundred a week. Um, and I appreciate all of them. So don't stop sending them, but just understand that I might not get to respond to all of them or that if we do respond, it might take some time. Um, and so I, I do appreciate everyone that has sent me a message. Uh, but some of those messages, what I'm getting is people who really don't know what to do and they're frustrated and it's not just you know black people right like the the obvious is right now black people are frustrated rightfully so with what is going on in this country but what i am seeing are white people sending me messages and saying hey you know i would like to also be seen and be treated fairly but because of the skin that i'm in I am automatically um, being assumed to be a certain way when I'm not. And so I think that we, like I said, going back to my first tenant, like let's 
pause, right? I think that in order for us to get past this and really start to think through how we're treating each other, we've got to start pausing. So now I am totally with, like I have um, a friend who is, um, she's great at getting out there. She's joined the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, she's actually in, in the South Bay and I she just read the, um, South Bay Breeze article about the um, Black Lives Matter caravan that they did at, for the 4th of July weekend. And so great props, right? And she invites me all the time and says, Stacey, you need to get out here and protest with us. And I feel bad because I'm like, oh, I really want to, I want to go. But then I realize I'm already exhausted. I'm already exhausted from doing this work, right? So we all have our part to play. There are so many nuances to what is happening right now, and we all have our parts to play. Some of us are out protesting. Some of us are out doing the corporate work. Some of us are doing mixed race work. Some of us are dismantling white supremacy, and we're talking about anti-racism. Um, you know, like there's just so many different things that are happening. We're doing leadership training. We're, you know, trying to teach our children. Where we're doing. Um, different workshops for kids, for universities, for schools. And so I think that it's going to take everyone, right? Everyone doing our part. There are groups on Facebook, which I'm so naive to this, I didn't even realize, that are out there actively finding people who are being racist uh, and sexist online and who are trolling people and who are threatening people. There are people who are getting death threats. Um, and so these Facebook groups, they're out there finding these people, finding their jobs and getting them fired. So I do want to say, if you're out there, beware, because they're coming for you. And you know what? I applaud it. And I appreciate the people who have the time to make that happen. So I, I just want to say that we each have our part to play. And um, I think that that's important that we, we each figure out what that part is. And I think the important piece is that you do actually play a part, right? So um, I got a message from an individual who said, you know, what he's doing every day is he's just taking some time, an hour every morning to take a, another course and to learn. And I think that's great. Like that, that's really what we need to do even before we start doing is some of it, we need to kind of sit back and learn a little and say, okay, what do I need to know, right? What don't I already know? Or what are people trying to tell me? Um, and so I think that we have to look at that and be introspective for a little while. I know that we're ready to jump out there and, and expect change, but you got to realize that for corporate America, right, which is where I'm dealing, these companies have been doing this for years. It's not going to change immediately. There are lots of people who do want change, right? They want to see the change and that's great. And so uh, I want to help those individuals, right? And that's what we're doing. So um, what I'm actually posting right now is some links to the unconscious bias course that are in other languages because the really cool thing too that uh, LinkedIn did is they translated my course into I think three, maybe five. Um, I think they're working on five languages. So that's really great. I believe it's in Japanese. I think it's in either Mandarin or Cantonese. Um, and Spanish, and I believe they were working on some other languages. So I'm sharing those links because if you know people who speak another language and English is not their native language and they would like to view the Unconscious Bias course, uh, this might help them. So uh, I want to, you know, like I said, kind of put that out there for you. Um, LinkedIn has really made it easy to share these courses and to be able to participate in the in the learning. And so the other thing that I'm telling people is, look, I love every single one of you who has watched one of my courses on LinkedIn. I appreciate you. Thank you. Share it. That's great. But at the same time, it's like 24 minutes. So please understand that it is literally the baseline, bare bones, minimum that you could do if you want to learn about unconscious bias. So please don't watch my course and then say, oh, now I know everything I need to know. That is not the purpose of this course. The course is, it's there to open your eyes a little bit, to create some awareness. I am getting messages from people who said, hey, this is new. I knew nothing of this. 
And while that is sometimes shocking to me, I realize, well, I've been doing this for years, so of course I know about it, but not everyone does. So that's the other part, right? Perspective is realizing that not everyone has the same perspective. And it goes back to that, that article. It's like, we need to stop and remember that not everyone comes from the same place. Not everyone has the same degree of information or access to information. And we have to recognize that. So. I'm not going to beat myself up for the fact that I can't jump into a corporation and change everybody right away. Um, and I don't want anyone else to do that either. Right. So at the end of the day, if we can all start to, you know, my, my big tip is pause, pause a little bit, be a little introspective and then start having some conversations. I think the cool thing is a lot of uh, people have been reaching out to me and they said they're going to be sharing the course with their um, with their coworkers and they're going to be talking about it. So that's the next piece, right? Like, don't just share it. Talk about it. What did you learn? What did you think? How does this apply to our workplace? What might we need to change, right? Like, start asking some questions. You can create a committee to start to have those conversations. Where do we see this type of bias um, pop up, you know? Like, let's have those conversations. And if you have employee resource groups, um, you can ask them, right? But don't make them bear the brunt and the burden of doing all of the work. I read, uh, I forget which organization it was, but somebody posted that they, within their ERG, they asked for help and became the help, right? Because then they had to turn around and teach everyone and train everyone. I've got to say, the, the, when you send messages that say, we are committed, but we don't have a budget, you're not committed, right? So if your employee resource group needs assistance, if you want your employee resource group to lead the charge, you need to give them a budget so they can go out and they can hire someone to help them. They can hire someone to give them um, that information because you're not paying them uh, additional to do this additional work for you, right? Like you, the phrase, put, your, put the money where your mouth is, really matters when it comes to this kind of work. And it's the same with any kind of leadership training, right? If you if you were looking and you were working in an organization and you had leaders that were not doing a good job of, um, you know, making sure their employees were safe in, in, the, in the warehouse, what would you do? You'd make sure that you got safety training and that you fixed that issue immediately. Why? Because there's accountability, because there's OSHA. So we have to do the same thing with diversity and inclusion, right? Like you can take that 24 minute course, but you can turn that into a conversation, which you can then turn into doing some observation and you can then turn into action. So that is my charge for you today is how can you take action from that course and how can you take it to your organization to really start to make the change? Because I can't do it by myself. I love the fact that you're reaching out and I've been getting a lot of people asking if I can come in and I can do training. So the answer to that question is yes, yes, I can. <laughs> but at the same time, I understand that I can't be everywhere and there are lots of great DEI professionals out there who can help you. Um, and if you need help, please reach out, right? We can provide the guidance, but at some point you've got to do the work internally and you've got to figure out how to make that accountability happen. If you do not have the accountability, everything that you're doing will be completely for naught. And I really hate to say it, but that's completely accurate, right? And, and you know this from working in your organizations. How many times have you put some sort of uh, procedure in place or some initiative and it's gone nowhere, right? I really don't want unconscious bias, anti-racism, white privilege training or any of that within your organization to go nowhere because there was no accountability. So that is my charge to you. Um, and then I think, so this is new for me doing this live. I'm doing live on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I see a couple of questions people are asking if I posted the course. I did post the course, but what I will also do, I think it shows up in Facebook, but maybe not LinkedIn or it shows up in LinkedIn, but not Facebook. I'm not sure. <laughs> so what I will do is I will go ahead and post those links on my um, LinkedIn page uh, after the um, after this live is done, and you'll be able to go there and grab the links. Um, at least the you can always go to my website too to reworkwork.com, and the links to the English courses are there. But you know, I should put up the links to the uh, to the other courses too. But I will go ahead and I will post them um, 
on my my LinkedIn page. So I really appreciate everyone that has joined. I think what I'm going to start doing um, again, don't hold me quite accountable to this yet, <laughs> but I am working on bringing in some people to have a conversation uh, because you know my number one thing that I hate to hear people say is that I can't find you know black whatever right Latina we had talked about this last time but I, I mention it all the time because it's my biggest pet peeve and it's the number one way to make me want to just sock you in the nose um, <laughs> so just beware so um, I want to start maybe bringing on some people to talk about their journey and what they're doing because you know I know some fabulous black people, especially some fabulous black women. And um, I don't want to keep them a secret. So if you don't know who they are, I think we're going to start bringing them on and have them talk to you and have some conversations about what's going on right now. Uh, so that's what I believe we're going to start doing in the next couple of weeks. So I am going to be going live at least through August. That's my goal right now. So if you would like to join me again next week, I'll be back at 8 a.m. Pacific time. All right. Thanks all. Have a wonderful day.